Nice to see Mark taking such an interest in Tizzy. Yes. Is he a good teacher? Terrible. I mean, at teaching people to ride horses. So do I. Dick's by far the better teacher. Really? Hmm. I mean, at teaching people how to ride horses. I know exactly what you mean. That's right. Well, use your strength, Tizzy. Come on, what do you think muscles are for, lad? suitcases. I brought far too many things. You always did. <laughs> Was it worth it? How do you mean? I bet Mark thought you looked very beautiful in that last night. Ah, well. I'm a good teacher, too. Horses? Oh, no, not horses. So many things. Point in waving when she can't see you. Oh, don't be so practical. It's silly. I'm allowed to be silly. I've noticed. Are we going to quarrel? Sorry, I haven't got time. Tizzy. Yes, Uncle Mark. How would you like to ride pheasant this afternoon? I don't think so. Well, of course you would. <laughs> Dorothy on her way then, is she? Yes. She's a bonny girl, that. <laughs> and she knows it. In the nicest possible way, of course. Yes. I think Mr. Mark's quite taken a fancy to her. Don't you think so, miss? Young Tizzy. He went out and pheasant, but she's come back on her own. Well, why didn't you stop him? He's not strong enough to ride pheasant. Well, I know that, but Master Mark said to me that Ma, I was to take... Put my side saddle on her. Right. Come on. Good. Here. You ought to be certified and locked up. Really? What's the matter? Tizzy! Tizzy! Stupid child! Come on! Come on, lad! Dick! Whoa there! Dick! Dick! What's the matter? Mark sent Tizzy out riding on pheasant, and she's thrown him somewhere and we can't find him! It's the sort of damn fool thing he would do. Where is Mark? He's looking for him in the woods. Well, don't worry, my love. We'll find him. 
carry on, I'll follow you. We should send for the doctor. No one's ill. Well, just in case. Well, wouldn't you go the whole hog then? Send for the undertaker as well. Oh, what an awful thing to say. Or the fire brigade. Or perhaps we could all just get on with our jobs until we know whether anything's happened. Tizzy! Oh, what did you do with him? Tizzy! Christina! Christina is over here! Is he all right? I think so. He's taking a nasty bash on his head. I fell off. My head hurts. Don't worry, boy. We all fall off sometimes. I think we need a doctor. Ma! Come on, my lad. Come on, on you go. a good brave horseman to ride into the village and get the doctor. Right. Come on, my lad. You can get the doctor to check one or two other heads while he's about it. Come oh, boy, let's get you home. of sleep and he'll be all right. I've had far worse here at Lombards. Broken noses, broken legs, and worse. Considering they are such good horsemen, they do seem to fall off a great deal. I know. Ah, how is he, Doctor? Spot of concussion? Yes, that's about it. He'll be all right. Good. Uh, I wonder if you could do me a small favour, Doctor. Yes. Could you post that for me in the village? It's taken me all day to write. I don't think I've got the strength to post it as well. Thank you very much, Doctor. Mary will show you out. Good night. Good night. The lecture, the official reprimand, the court-martial. I'll be shot at dawn. Don't you want to know how your son is? Let me make an intelligent guess. He's had a bang on the head, and he'll be as right as rain after a good night's sleep. It might have been more serious. 
He might have been badly injured. He might even have been dead. Not interested in might have beens, Christina. This last couple of years in the war, I might have been dead lots of times. <laughs> or other times, I might have been a hero and won the Victoria Cross. Or I might have got a different answer and been your husband. So I don't think about all that. I think about what is. You're just like your father. It can happen. Sitting there, staring into the fire, drinking and... And what? Waiting for the hunting season to begin. Correct. Also, thinking about flambards. I mean, here I am, the Lord and Master, and here you are. And what am I? A house guest. Is that all? In legal terms, yes. I put my money into this house and into this farm. I help bring this place alive again. You and your peasant farmer? Are you talking about Dick? I suppose I am. Well, he says he's going to leave. Shouldn't think he relishes the idea of working for me very much. If you've got something to say, say it. I want to know what your intentions are, Christina. Now, I know the easy solution is for me to go off to the war and get myself killed. You can all go on as before, but I don't intend getting killed. Not if I can possibly avoid it. I don't want you to get killed. Oh, good, good. So, I stay alive, come back here when the war's over, with the lady of my choice. Dorothy. That's my business. Are you staying here or are you going off with your peasant? I love Flambard. You love Dick as well, don't you? That's my business. Well, I'm giving you notice. If I'm running Flambards, I run it my way, my father's way. I've written to the lawyer. He's coming down to tell me how much I owe you. I always settle my debts, Christina. You mean since I said I wouldn't marry you, you've been plotting to get me out of this house? Yes. You sound like you hate me. If I can't have you, I don't want you here reminding me. And that's not hatred, Christina. That's the opposite. I see. I'll leave as soon as it's convenient, and I'll take the children with me. In your own time. There's no hurry. I think it should be soon. Whatever you like. Could I have a glass of water? Tissy, what are you doing out of bed? I couldn't get to sleep. Come on, back to bed. What are you saying to Uncle Mark? Just silly grown-up talk. Aunt Chrissy? Yes? I don't want to leave you. Come on. Pretend you're asleep. I've got to pay the men the wages. Would you like a cup of tea, miss? 
No, thank you, Mary. Could I have a word? Yes, yeah, certainly. Nobody ever wants a word with Mary. I don't blame her. Yeah, Mr. Fairley, you're a sucker. Sugar. Uh, I thought I'd better tell you straight away. Can you stay on at Plumbart? As long as Mr. Mark's going to run it, I can't work for him, you know that. Where will you go? London, maybe. I don't know. Just away. What will you do if Mr. Mark makes you leave Flambard? I don't know either. London? Buy a place in the country? It's not a question of where. It's a question of who with. Yes, I do love you. That's very bold of you. I don't care. I'm not a servant now, you know. I know. And it's not just me. There's the children. It'll be three for the price of one. I'll support you all. We'll support us all. I don't want your money, Christina. We'll share everything. No, we won't. You're getting above yourself. Above my proper station in life. <laughs> I'd have liked to have been born an aristocrat. You are an aristocrat. I reckon I am. <laughs> There's a fire in this! What? The stables! Come on! Oh, <laughs> 
have no idea. I don't want to leave them, but... Neither do I, Tizzy. Talk about it tomorrow. I don't want to go away. Tizzy? Did you do it? Tizzy? Would you rather stay here and flam about with your Uncle Mark? Or would you rather come with us? I'll come with you and Aunt Chrissy, please. Started it. Did he? He admits it. No. <laughs> you know, I haven't had so much fun for ages. <laughs> it isn't funny. One of us could have been hurt. Mm. The horses could all have been burnt to death. Oh, yes. Now I see your point. Yes. <laughs> oh, you're taking it much too seriously. It is serious. Mark, we could have lost everything. But we didn't, did we? You know, he's not a bad chap, that peasant of yours. Well, have you asked Tizzy why he did it? He doesn't want to leave Flambards. Well, perhaps he won't have to. Yet a while. How do you mean? This arrived this morning. What is it? It's a telegram instructing me to report to the war office on Friday. I think they're probably going to promote me. And then send me back to France. What do you want me to say? Congratulations. Say what you like. But I don't want to go back to France. I want to stay here, same as Tizzy. Sending the place alight wouldn't help, would it? Do you think he'd set fire to France and the war office for me? I'd supply him with the matches and the straw. <laughs> oh, Mark. I do wish you'd speak to him, though. After all, he is your son. You could at least make sure he doesn't do it again. Well, I'll give him a good thrashing, if you like. That's no problem. Why didn't you say so? Mark! Won't take long. We often have to do things that we'd rather not do. Sometimes we have to go to places that we'd rather not go to. And at other times we have to do things that we find boring or dull or frightening. But you still do them. You grit your teeth and behave like a man. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. Good. And you don't set fire to people's places, do you? No. And especially not to stables. And any time you find you have to do something that you'd rather not do, however frightening it may be, you will do it, won't you? Yes. Now bend over that stool like I showed you. It's 
Stand up now, if you like. Let that be a lesson to you. <laughs> you want to go riding now? Please. What's all that about? I think it's about the Russell family. Young as Perkins. Who's he? He's a solicitor. You're right, he's a funny looking old boy. Trouble. Have a scotch, Mr. Perkins. Uh, not while I'm working. Yes, you wish. Find I can't cope with facts and figures without lubrication. I have to warn you, they are a little depressing. What's this? Balance sheet? A balance sheet. You see, I know a balance sheet when I see one. It says so on top. Mm. Well, a terrible lot of it seems to be written in red, Mr. Perkins. I'm afraid so. And they're all debts, presumably. That's why they're in red. Exactly. I just thought they might have changed the system, that's all. I'm afraid it's the same system, Mr. Russell. Will you explain it to me? Your father left a great many debts. Uh, wine merchants, horse stealers, grain merchants. Well, they're all good causes. He also raised a large mortgage on the house. Your only assets are the farm and the farm buildings. The house is in the hands of a finance company. I see. Well, you have to admire a father that leaves a mess like this. What do you recommend I do, Mr. Perkins? Your only chance of making money out of this property is to work the land. Be a farmer? Me? When the war's over and you're able to leave the army? A farmer? <laughs> Miss Christina has done a lot to bring the place back to life. Well, I've nothing against farmers. I've nothing against Christina. Just a sort of having to work for a living. You put your finger right on it. I've never considered work as a way of life. It's enough to drive one to drink. Have you considered your future at all, Mr. Russell? No. I consider it as it comes, a day at a time. I must say, I quite enjoy the army. Not wildly enthusiastic about Germans firing shells at me, but the army, if I had to work. Yes, I suppose I could live with that. Well, Mr. Russell, if you don't want to work your land, the only sensible and practical alternative is to sell. What? Sell Flambards? It would just about pay off the debts, and you'd have a little capital in hand. Well, who on earth would buy a wreck like Flambards? I would. You? I'm a woman of substance, and I'm a good farmer. You bitch. You're not prepared to work for a living, I am. Can she afford it, Mr. Perkins? Oh, yes, quite comfortably. I, I'm not saying that I would recommend it as a business proposition. I'm not but... interested in business propositions. If you want time to think about it. Do what the hell you like. Still in the family. Eventually it'll all go to Dizzy. After all, he is a Russell, isn't he?
Yes. He's a Russell. Every inch a Russell. I really think I must be growing up. All the years I spent at Flambards, everything always seemed the same. Sometimes it was raining, and sometimes it was snowing, and sometimes it was misty, but once a year, spring came round and we knew nothing would change. And change they do, change they certainly do. father dies, you realize nothing's forever. It was different when my mother died. I was young and it seemed like a silly accident. But father... I suppose you realize that it must be your turn next. Maybe not for 50 years, but one day, like poor old William. the phrase brotherly love. Well, you seem to get on better with cousins. You've noticed. He didn't have to wait long for his turn. Mind you, he got Christina, so he shouldn't really complain. They tell you that in the books you read, if you're silly enough to read books. I sometimes do. You've got to do something in the trenches between battles. They say, find the right girl and everything will be all right. And you find the girl and she says she doesn't want you and takes your house away from you. That's what I mean. Nothing stays the same. Get on, love. How do you like driving my car? I think I still prefer hooves beneath me. At all. We didn't even get to see that show. What was it called? Oh, Chu Chin Chow. Chu Chin Chow. <laughs> I hear it's very good. Yes. I've seen it. Oh. I'd love to see it again, though. With you. Oh! Oh! Jiba! Jiba! Very pleasant car. I could easily get to think of it as home. Do you always travel with a bottle of champagne? Only when there's something to celebrate. But you couldn't have been sure. What if I'd have said no? Then I would have used it to drown my sorrows. Really? Yes! I would. Really. Cheers. Oh, I must be mad. Yes, you must be. <laughs> Mr. Mary? <laughs> oh, my, you do look smart, Mr. 
Mr. Mark. Thank you, Mary. The War Office is promoting me. I'm very pleased. <laughs> nice to see you again, Miss Dorothy. You, They're also issuing me with a brand new fiance. Your fiance? Yes. <laughs> Miss Dorothy's agreed to marry me. For my money, of course. <laughs> what are you doing? Kissing. Kissing, silly. Of course it isn't. You said it was. I believe there's been a lot of rumour and gossip flying about. I think I should clear it up here and now. I'm going to buy flambards from Mr. Mark. All the necessary papers are being signed. We'll continue to work the farms before. Uh, but better. <laughs> and work hard to make flambards the sort of place it should be. And that's all, really. You're supposed to say, are there any other questions? Oh, am I? Um... That's what officers say in the army. It ain't wise to ask officers questions. Oh, we're not officers. So ask away. Oh, right. You ask her. Well, I'm not going to. You ask her. I'm not. Nor me. I wish somebody would ask whatever it is. Die wollen wissen, ob wir bald eine Hochzeit feiern. Jawohl. Ah. What was that all about? He asked if there was going to be a wedding. Apart from Mr. Marx. And I said, yes, there is. Well, I'm sure we're all very happy for you both. So are we. Uh, I'm for flambards. Well, I uh, expect we'd better be getting back to work. Oh, I was enjoying talking. I made an interesting discovery about Dorothy. Really? She's even richer than you are, Christina. She must be very rich. <laughs> she owns a hotel in Northamptonshire, 17th Century Inn on Watling Street. Your very <laughs> own public house. Our very own hotel. Father bought it years ago as an investment. So when Mark leaves the army, we'll take it over and run it together. Yeah. You're <laughs> going to work. Well, I thought I might do a spot of uh, stock taking in the cellar, eh? <laughs> <laughs> You're missing the point, Christina. It's in Northamptonshire. What about it? I know. Tell her. It's very good hunting country. It's the Pitchley the, 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 Hounds the, the, the and the Grafton. The Pitchley Hounds and the Grafton. The Pitchley Hounds and the Grafton. Yeah. Right on the doorstep. You see, he's quite bright, considering. Considering what? Considering I'm a peasant. Oh, you're not. <laughs> Still, I'm working very hard learning how to be a gentleman. He's had a very good teacher. Knives and forks always work from the outside. Never hit a lady. Unless you take your cap off first. <laughs> always back the outsider in a field of three. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. Always hold a woman by the waist and a bottle by the neck. Oh, always a silver lining. <laughs> Ne'er cast a clute until maize root. <laughs> your turn. Uh, don't spit against the wind. Oh, no, that's it's it's quite easy, really. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could almost get to like you, Dick. I was just thinking the same thing myself. Cousin-in-law. Is there such a thing as a cousin-in-law? You might find something about it in King's Regulations. Cheers. Cheers. Cousin-in-laws! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, my darling. There we go. You know, have you considered what you're taking on with me? Yes. Have you considered what you're taking on? No, but I'm dying to find out. Oh, shh, listen. I think there's going to be an air raid. Oh, well, 
They won't bomb Flambards. There's always a first time. They're only trying to spoil the party. Let's forget the blasted war for yeah. one evening. Let's have another bottle. Yes, 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 open it. Whoa. Yeah, oh, here we go. This is another of those oh, no. vintage years. <laughs> it's a, a minute <laughs> <Vintage. laughs> Flambards, Christina. We will. I'm sure you'll do a better job than we did. Full of herself, miss. Oh. Well, help the little lady up then, Dick. Ist gut. Fabelhaft, ja, ist gut gemacht, jawohl. Das auch. Morgen, Wilhelm! Ah, guten Morgen! Wie geht's? Gut! Wir werden bis heute Abend fertig sein. Sehr gut. He says he's gonna get this film finished by the day. Oh. Ihr seht ja beide sehr glücklich aus. Ja? <laughs> What did he say then? He said we both look very happy. <laughs> I remember something my dad once said to me. You never wow. knew my dad. No, I wish I had. He said, you'll be on the land all your life, unless you marry a rich widow. Well, I'm going to marry a rich <laughs> widow. Yes. Well, he said it was daft. No, it isn't daft. <laughs> It's funny when you say it. I want to know all about your family. Your mum and your dad. I've got a lot to catch up on. 
My father, he was a keen churchgoer, not like me. He believed the meek would inherit the earth. But he never did. You never believed it, and you have. Still doesn't make sense, though, does it? How do you mean? The earth. Have you ever looked at the earth? Yes. Lots of times. Go on. Trees and streams, rabbits, skylarks. They can't belong to anybody. It doesn't make sense. That sounds like a poacher talking. But it's true. I mean, how can anyone say this is my stream and these are my fish swimming in it? But I will look after your land for you. We peasants have been looking after the land for hundreds of years. I'll just carry on as before. <laughs> you know, William would have said you were a secret radical. How can you expect a humble peasant like me to understand what radical means? <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind if I talk about William sometimes? No. Why should I mind that? that came down the other night. Yeah. All the fellows were killed. Yes, I know. I'll get the lads to tidy that up. When I was a little boy, my mum and dad used to have one of those houses on the wall. A little man came out when it was raining. A little woman came out when the sun was shining. I've been waiting all these years for you to tell me that. No, but the point is it always looked a little bit to me like Lambards. Oh, it's a nice house. Yes. I like the little woman who comes out when the sun's shining. She talks a lot, but... I talk a lot. You never stop. It's the excitement. I've inherited the earth. Is it good? Yes. It's very good. <laughs> 